Hello, folks, and welcome to Resident Rise Expeditionary Force. I'm your host, Kieran Dave, original creator of the Resident Rise mod pack, and now just one of the managers. Um, and I have not been working on the 1710 mod pack. And we're in 1710. Let me prove it to you. We're gonna we're gonna run over here, and we're gonna hop down, and well, maybe not. How about here? Boom! Little particles. See, we're 1710. We've got Botania. We've got tons of interesting, really cool mods. We've got uh, Pneumaticraft. We've got uh, Magical Crops. Got some of the classic ones. As you can see, we've got Ruins over there. We really have it. We have a... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. we got a Glowstone. Oh, boy. This is tough. The server is in hard mode, which makes this exceptionally difficult um, as a uh, environment. Um, Resident Rise early on is not an easy mod pack just because the uh, creatures get such good gear. But with Ender Zoo and with random things giving us blood moons, this has actually been a really exceptionally difficult uh, environment to succeed in. And in fact, uh, everybody who's been joining has been kind of struggling to do the best they can to stay alive, especially when the blood moons come, because the monsters from Ender Zoo, in particular Wither Witches, just absolutely destroy us. That said, um, th let me talk about who's on the server. We've got a bunch of people. Um, some of the old favorites are coming back. Uh, Sice from the original Resident Rise testing team is coming back. Uh, we've got a couple of new people from Tumblr. Uh, folks like uh, Lucy and Sam, who you may have met before uh, or seen if you've got, visited my live streams. We've got Boa from Boa Illustration. Uh, we've got, uh, as you can see over there, Nero, one of the Resident Rise core teams, one of the awesome people, along with Ryan, who's done the bulk of the work for this session. Um, he's starting up a base over there. We've got a lot of people on the server. Now, uh, check out my cool... Well, I got some arrows in my back, but check out my cool uh, Resident Rise Expeditionary Force digs. We're all ready to, to start experimenting and go to this whole new world and show everybody how to succeed. Because not everybody really knows about the 1710 mod packs. For folks who've been playing Yogg's Cast Complete, we've been at 164 for a long time, and maybe they haven't got a chance to play with it. For folks who have been getting a chance to play with it, maybe they just haven't played with it quite enough, or, or seen some of the mods that we've included, because some of them are new. Uh, so, I think with that, you could see... I've got this nice little base. You can see my little starter hole where I was holding up against zombies. We're right next to a big piece of applied energistic skystone that we'll eventually be able to break into. Uh, yeah, and um, we're kind of perched up in a tree here next to this farm I've been working on. Now, I've been uh, sort of thinking about how I want to proceed. And uh, one of the first things I've got to do is start mining. Now, let's go back up here. I've got a few things ready on the mining front. You know, it's not, uh, it's not perfect, but it is a... Um, it is a pretty good setup. Let's, let's start here. Let's look. You can see we've got some plants. We've got a small amount of metals. We've got a small amount of Certus Quartz. I've got some Sapphires. I should actually uh, sit down and make a pick there for those, I think, because we're sort of at a difficult point. Let's see. Uh, and we've got some furnaces and other useful things like that. Now, I need to go mining um, to get things, and I also probably need to uh, sleep as soon as we're, we're capable of doing that. Look at me uh, hop in. Yes. Uh, you can see some other people here. We skipped a blood moon just so that I could start recording. Uh, but yay! Okay, rise, rise and shine, wakey, wakey. Uh, let's consider how we're going to proceed. So I need to get some materials. In particular, I'm looking for charged Certus Quartz. Now, I have a mine head over there by Ryan's place. But I don't necessarily want to go in there unprepared. Um, one thing I found is some magical armor by defeating uh, some uh, mobs from... Uh, Atomic Strikers mod. So let's go ahead and put those over my cool outfit. Let's put on these glowstone boots because let's face it, and I'm uh, quite the fashion disaster right now, I confess. But uh, this is hard. <laughs> the, the things hit like trucks. Um, similarly, we should probably take some of these sapphires, which really are only useful for tools, hop over here and uh, put together a few tools. Now you can see I've got a little bit of basic stuff laid out. Um, let's get a, well, let's actually get a pick. So we have a nice iron level pick. Uh, oh, poor, uh, poor Sakalo. Uh, sorry. Let's get a sword so that we have a little bit more damage. This is plus seven. Much better than this copper sword. There we go. Uh, and let's go ahead and toss those in there for now. I think that's going to... We're not really going to need a shovel. Don't do that much digging. But one thing I do want to do is go over and... Uh, well, right over here, I think. Um, the one thing I found is this mysterious property of the world. Now, this is very curious. We've got this regular cobblestone. We've got some charcoal. Now, interestingly enough, when I do this, it we can basically, if I focus on it enough, we can actually sort of 
break down the, into its properties. Now, this stuff is very strange. It's confusing, actually, because it seems to have some of the properties of the world around it, but uh, not the properties of anything magical it seems to completely be non-reactive with. But I did notice this. If I take these and put these in a circle and then put a stick in the middle, we actually get this kind of divining rod. Now, that's kind of a, ob an interesting object. Um, let me take this down into the mines and I'll show you how it works. Let's just head down here into my starter hole. And uh, if we look around, um, this, this rod allows me to tap on the ground and actually get kind of an interesting perspective on things. So it, it reacts to the ground. Um, and it allows me to sort of see what's valuable. So in this case, it looks in a little 3x3 three three area down. Uh, and it says that down here, there's something much more valuable. If we look over here, right, and we tap the ground, it says there's zero. But here, there's something quite valuable. So maybe if we were to dig here, we'd be rewarded with the uh, vision of something much more valuable than we might expect. Aha! Check this out. So we found some blue topaz ore. And if I click this, yep, 17. And if we go this way, we don't really see that much of value except for just, you know, stone. So let's go ahead and dig through this and maybe get some blue topaz for ourselves. Oh, we're going to have to use something a little bit harder. There we go. But this will allow me to sort of inspect the walls um, at places. Like, for example, I know that copper is relatively relatively low value at 5. Um, and we, it looks like we have amber, which has... Not everything has value. Um, interestingly enough, it seems like magical things have no value whatsoever. Um, I'm not sure if that's good or not. We'll have to think about it. But uh, just random webs because there's all these creatures trying to web me all the time. All right, so I'm going to head over to my actual mine, and we'll see if we can pick up a couple worthwhile things. Because at the very least, I need some redstone. I could use a few diamonds. And using this uh, using this divining rod, I'll be able to uh, probably, probably figure things out. We'll have to see. Friends, check this out. So while... while uh, looking around for ore, tapping the uh, wall with my divining rod to see, oh yes, I should in fact dig here. There'll be something around here that's interesting. So 76, I think that's uh, ironish. Let's see, ah, no, there's some peridot here, and it's a little bit higher, but it, it suggests there's something else as well. It's pretty cool, that way you can just sort of figure out, like, whether you should keep digging, whether a particular line is fruitful or not. Like, any value above 50 generally is worth digging for, for sure. Looks like there was just some peridot here. But we also got some, some copper over this way. But like I said, we also got oil here amongst the tin and the copper. And we've been, oh, we've been finding quite a bit of this stuff. Whew, that was a little bit dangerous. A little bit scary. <laughs> It'll be fine, though. It'll be fine. Let's see if we can maybe build a little, maybe build a little bit of safety around this. But yeah, so this this uh, divining rod is really helping me mine more effectively and more quickly, uh, which is important because I need a lot of resources quickly, and I don't have any of the traditional tools that we would use, like a quarry or anything like that. I'll definitely have to come back here for this source of oil. It seems seems like good stuff. Oh wow, I was just digging and I found a mine shaft down here. Ooh, that's quite the drop. I'm gonna have to be careful. Uh, it looks like. Um, I noticed an unusually low value with my with divining rods. So let's see if we can just cut our way safely down here and make a staircase that allow us to descend and reascend safely. All right, this is fantastic. Uh, check this out. We've got a dense ore of gold here. So there's oh, I've noticed that some of the uh, ores can sometimes appear in a particularly dense mode. And then when you go ahead and cut through them, uh, they produce a lot more ore than you might expect. Look, that one produced three ore. Which is really good for us. Oh no, we lost some. Oh no, we're losing some. Okay, we're gonna have to <laughs> gonna have to wall this off a little bit. Uh, you took one of my gold ores. I guess I got more than I expected, anyways. And oh look, air infused stone and dense silver ore. I don't have a ton of a use for silver right now, but I think lead would be useful too. Any sort of industrial metal, really. Uh, we'll have to see. And oh look, we've actually got some uh, train tracks as well. Um, now we don't have rail craft, so it's actually a little bit easier to build these tracks um, early, but they also there's not as much value, much bang for your buck with the train tracks. So we'll have to we'll have to see if we can actually use the tracks for once, because usually I just kind of don't feel like the trouble of rail craft. But um, I do also sort of acutely feel oh whoa 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 no oh dense dense lead huh that could be good. Let's see if we can render that safe. Oh there I'm stuck in webs. 
All right, well, this is a really fruitful and exciting mining edition. I know that normally mining is not particularly exciting, but I gotta tell you, I'm having a great time. Now, the ore distribution is very, very different than it used to be in Resonant Rise. It's much less dense um, than it used to be. However, there are more ores than ever before, and some of the ores actually have this dense property. So on average, you, ooh, look, we found some uh, essence ore. Uh, on average, you'll end up with much the same stuff. Let's see, does this register? It doesn't register. Uh, that's interesting. Maybe we'll have to see if maybe we can we can correct that. Maybe we can find some way to train it. And look, order infused stone. That can't help but be useful. Let's get this oil out of the way and see if we can get over there. Uh-oh, don't light on fire. Oil oil and fire do not mix. And uh, wow, we've got, whoa, we've got, a, <laughs> we've got a customer here. Can I help you, sir? Sir, sir, can I help you? Sir, you're being you're being an unruly customer, and I reserve the right to refuse service to anyone. And there's a creeper down there too. Huh? Appears to be floating in the oil, getting all messed up. Let's see if we can get some of these too. Oh dear, it's gonna be difficult to start choosing and, and picking what we're gonna keep. Aha, redstone, just what we've been looking for. And what a curious rock formation, basalt. Wow, it looks like even the even other types of ores can now actually. Uh, other types of rocks can now carry ores. That's really cool. Ooh, tricky to get to gold. I think we're going to have to, first of all, I hear an awful lot of monsters, so let's wall ourselves in, and let's build a little safe spot for ourselves, and let's see if we can wall this off intelligently. Is that enough? All right, let's get that gold. All right, friends, we have managed to make it back in one piece, although it was a little bit hit or miss, and uh, I managed to eat up on the way up here, and it's nighttime, and it is dangerous outside. There's awful, an awful lot of dangerous enemies, but uh, as you can see, this pick is almost broken. Really, we're just totally full up on stuff, so check out all these amazing things. Uh, we've got uh, a bunch of gold, silver, much more lead than we had before. Actually, this is the wrong chest, isn't it? Uh, let's put it up in the right chest. Come on, a place for everything, Dave. A place for everything. Uh, gold, where we didn't have any before. Much more lead. Uh, more than double our silver amount. And to the point now where we actually have probably more silver than I know what to do with. Uh, a lot more iron. A lot more copper. Tin to spare. Osmium. Yellowite. Zinc. Which we can use to make brass. Quite useful, actually. Ferris ore. Um, some Thomcraft shards, which we'll definitely have to keep track of. Uh, a lot more Certus Quartz, which I think we're going to be using shortly. Um, some of this we could consider starting to maybe use uh, uh, magical crops. And of course, um, these new Essence Berry bushes. As soon as it's, uh, is it daybreak now? Can we sleep through? And you can see here I've been working, uh, basically in scanning. Now, I, you'll notice I got a conspicuous lack of diamond. I don't really know what to do about that. I'm going to have to maybe develop a more sensitive sounding, but I just I didn't get any luck. The diamond density is quite a bit lower than it used to be, so I guess it shouldn't be too surprising, but it is a little bit frustrating. Hey, buddy, come here. Let's uh, get some experience from you. Hiya! There we go. Perfect. Level 25. Quite a bit of mining done. All right, and it uh, looks like there's a... um. There's a... What? Hey... Hey, you're not fooling anybody by hiding behind that tree. That's ridiculous. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. You're afraid to come out, huh? Because of the... There's a fallen knight. Huh. Okay, well, sure. Let's go ahead and put down these uh, for now. I don't think that they have a problem growing in the sunlight, but we'll find out if they do. They grow slowly anyways. Um, right, let's get back to offloading our stuff. Now, uh, perhaps we could think towards the task of actually... Um, processing all this ore. But first, what I'd really like to do, now that I have a little bit of redstone, is I'd really like to uh, upgrade this uh, staff. So it turns out that if I take a little bit of redstone and a little bit of iron, I can make the next tier of that covalence dust. Now, wrapping that around my existing uh, divining rod gives me this new divining rod. And... Um, if I, if I mouse over it, I can basically ask it, let's see here, I think this is the button, I can change the mode so that it, instead of just 3x3, three three, it actually goes 16 deep, so that, or, or as opposed to 3, which is the current one. So this should help me find some diamonds. So in a minute, I'm going to go looking for this, because it should be much, much, much easier to find uh, diamonds with this. I mean, you can just see that uh, the difference is going to be pretty profound. Um, let's just hop over here and see if we can, oof. As you can see, we've actually can for 119 blocks, and now we find the maximum EMC too. So there's actually something fairly valuable down there. Uh, one single block worth 450. I'm not sure what that would be. Perhaps uh, some Thomcraft blocks. 
But still, uh, I had a lot of problems down there because of my... Um, uh, first of all, my inability to fight back against a lot of mobs. A lot of them were ranged skeletons that could just pelt me at range. Second of all, I just didn't have a great armor value, and with a hard mode, it's been really, really brutal. Uh, and third of all, um, I just don't have great tools for picking and whatnot, so hopefully this will help me inform that. Also, I found a Magic Resistance 3 book fighting a Fallen Knight with particle effects coming off him. Got a bit more Lapis, got a bit more Gunpowder, which we could theoretically used to make TNT if we wanted to. Uh, more in the way of Peridots. Um, I'm not really sure what we can do with these. I guess we can make Peridot seeds, blocks of Peridot. Um, we can make picks. Maybe these are better? I don't know. They certainly are uh, some sickles, some tools, some saws. I don't know. Maybe they're like, uh, yeah, we could, we could mix, it looks like they're standard gems, so maybe we can use them there. Uh, and we got a lot of redstone. I mean, just a fantastic sum of that. Two stacks is really great for this stage. More coal, um, a lot more string, and this interesting Prometheum ore, which um, if we go ahead and uh, smelt that, or if we look at how we can use that, oh, not what I meant to do, actually the opposite of what I meant to do. <laughs> uh, we can use this. The uses for this include very, very nice tools. Um, check these out. Like these, uh, a lot high durability tools, um, some fairly good uh, armor, and uh, let's see. Some We can even do, use it for buckets and other things like that. So, I mean, not the best, but not the worst, for, for sure. I suppose, though, that maybe the next thing we should do is start processing some of this ore. I have a few plans about that.